The Serpent and the Ice is often considered the best episode of Conquest because it features Sub-Zero and Scorpion finally butting heads. And there's no doubt they do have a couple pretty cool fights in this episode, but it's still Conquest, so there's some issues with how we get there. One man stands in my way of conquering Earthrealm, yet he escapes death from every assassin. Two skilled killers can destroy Kanla. Who's Shao Kahn talking to? His silent guards that aren't even looking at him? Or maybe Raiko is just off screen? I must make the plan work. Yes, sir, Shao Kahn! Get out, Raiko! Oh, I wish I was you! So it's another shock and scheme episode, and we're told through randomly appearing reused footage of both that he's gonna make Sub-Zero and Scorpion team up. Why? Well, that's kind of like asking the meaning of life, isn't it? I could see him wanting to use one of these guys, mostly Scorpion, since that's who we've actually seen him have contact with before, and then have him team up with someone who's actually loyal to Shao Kahn. Even Raiko! That's right, even Raiko would make more sense than pairing up two that he can't trust and immediately show no unity. And of course, it was Shang Tsung, not Shao Kahn, who called upon the Lin Kuei last time. And while I don't like the Lin Kuei being dumbed down to serve either, at least Shang Tsung is from the same realm as them. If Shao Kahn's gonna call upon forces for a scheme of the week, they should probably be ones from Outworld. And the Lin Kuei, while not good guys, certainly have no reason to want to follow Shao Kahn, like I said, they are of Earth Realm, and having it fall to Khan wouldn't really suit their best interests. After Sub Zero shows off his very impressive chair destroying abilities, Scorpion makes a somewhat badass entrance to the meeting, but this is immediately destroyed when his girlfriend shows up. Who are you? Peron, Scorpion's second in command. An underling. One of the Lin Kuei's strictest rules is, of course, to kill underlings without cause. So, uh, which one of you is the Grand Ur Master? No, oh, him! No, wait, no, shit, some do no! The Lin Kuei ally with no one, especially the dead. Be very careful what you say. You should both be careful. I'm ordering you to join forces. For what? Seriously, who thought this was a good idea having Scorpion take a back seat and have his girlfriend do all the talking for him? It just undermines his character yet again, and besides, is anyone really buying this? We all know where Scorpion's heart really lies. You also fought Kung Lao. He lives. Though I probably shouldn't know about that since it was a Shang Tsung behind my back scheme of the week, but oh well. Kill Kung Lao. And then kill yourselves for all I care. Okay! Scorpion wins. Harakiri. I'd do it. Two, but I already died to a kick. Oh! Anything else you'd like? Tall blonde and a couple of weeks off? That's our reading! You have a problem. A big one. We can handle it, right? You mean the three of you as a team? We fight well together. <laughs> Scorpion and the Lin Kuei. I don't know if we can stand against the both of them together. Hmm, maybe we should have actually started forming that Earth Realm defense team, huh? That way, if Shao Kahn pairs up two random idiots, you don't immediately need to jump to, well, let's start digging our graves. Also, you'd think there'd be a little more confidence in the Mortal Kombat champion's best friend, the ex-bodyguard, Zero. Know your enemy. Learn everything we can about who we're up against. Look for an advantage. 
and do it quick. You don't have much time. So they go looking for info on Sub-Zero. Apparently this white monk dude just has a list of possible Sub-Zero families somehow. And I don't know if he's attempting an accent or just having trouble reading his lines. About the man within the monster. Many victims of Lin Kuei raids come to us for solace after they've lost their children. Also, Ciro must have gotten hit in the head sometime beforehand because he remarkably remembers continuity. Somehow an evil soul was transferred into an old friend of mine. Takeda. I remember Takeda was involved with a woman. Perone was her name. Wait, that's the name of the Scorpion girlfriend. It really is his girlfriend he's with? I'd love to know how that conversation went. Hey honey, sorry for disappearing on you, but I've been taken over by a scorpion, then died, then fell in love with a man, and I'm evil now. Wanna give it another shot? Yeah, okay. If there's any part of him left in Scorpion, Takeda is no more. This actually might have been a pretty neat part of the story if they ever referenced it again. In fact, you'd think since he's with Takeda's old girlfriend, and it'd be a clue that he is still in there. But they never try to get through to him or even mention Takeda's name again. Takeda. Damn you! Get over here. Okay, cut. Can you try that again? Just a little less bitchy, Scorpion? Over here. We'll use the first take. We're both here on Shao Kahn's orders. He knows who should run things. You and your snake creature. Better that than a bag of ice. Ice kills. Wanna die again, dead man? Okay, so here's the main problem with the Scorpion versus Sub-Zero thing in Conquest. Their actual game backstories of being from feuding clans, the elder Sub-Zero being Scorpion's killer, and Scorpion feeling the need to atone after trying to kill the younger Sub-Zero Sub-Zero for his brother's crimes are all wiped out and they are fighting over pettiness like Your snake's dumb. Oh yeah, well, so is your ice bag. I'd rather that than a bag who talks for me during meetings. I don't think so, you little bitch. It's nice we do at least get a battle between these two rather than they're just stuck being teamed up slaves under someone's power or something. But it might have been nice to have another episode to have built up more story between the two because the only reason this fight matters to anyone is based on their game characters. It has nothing to do with anything actually done in Conquest. But just to prove he's totally ballsless, Scorpion's girlfriend shows up and says the fight is over. I'll never share with the Lin Kuei. Then don't. Take him out of play. Hmm, maybe I could take him out of play by killing him in the woods! Oh wait, someone stopped that! Take him out of play. How? How do I do things? Girlfriend, can you throw my spear pent for me? I forgot how. Girlfriend, can I please kill Sub-Zero? No, Scorpion, this is Spa Day, you promised. Get out of here! I'm going to meet some families. So is Taja, one of them might be Sub-Zero's. You're going to meet Sub-Zero's family? Like you said, get to know the enemy. Well, that's good. The world is about to drop in on your head and you're going off to meet mommy and daddy. You think they'll convince their son not to turn you into an ice ball? By know your enemy, I of course meant... On a scale of 1 to 10, 10 being the most trouble, you're an 11. Is that why you came over here? To remind me how truly hideous things are? Pretty much. You need to get a hobby or something. Have one. It's you. 
This is actually one of the worst Raiden visits we've had in this show. He actively mocks his own advice from earlier, and despite other Raiden scenes in the show establishing that Raiden does have a lot of other responsibilities, this one makes it out that Raiden only has Kung Lao and just wants to pester him. Though Jeff Meek's Raiden is awesome, and he does save this from being a total loss with an absolutely amazing line. Give my love to the Zeros. Zero. Sorry. Just being careful. Clearly! Zero! The most careful Mortal Kombat character! What happens when you get a little edgier? Yeah, if only we knew what Zero did when he got edgier. Scorpion, we've come as you commanded. Hmm, this scene looks a little familiar. Did you really think no one would ever notice this conquest? <sighs> Actually, probably no one else ever did, as no one's cared to look at conquests that hard, except me. <laughs> <laughs> so Scorpion's two hook sword lackeys that were just left over from the ruins of his last episode would eventually go on to fuse into one being and become the one true Cabral. No Cabal. Okay, never mind. And I'm dead from that kick, I guess. You can assume the Nether Realm ain't me. Kung Lao takes what he now assumes to be the Zeros to the trading post, just as Sub Zero happens by. So he thought he'd just drop in for a first time visit with the real family now? <sighs> well said. Well, whatever it is, if Scorpion is after them, they really can't stay here. Wouldn't this be the best spot for them to be protected if Scorpion is after- <laughs> Oh, I get it. Zero, you lazy sack of shit. Come loud! Freezing them made them explode? That makes about as much sense as an ice grenade. Oh, right. I need to carelessly run off like an idiot! I'll just let her do it! Poor thing, you look scared to death. Here, let me help you. Oh, it's okay. <laughs> Sent. Certainly not a message to the audience, though, as she's hardly been a character and has spoken one line. He's right, we can't stay here. Yeah, I'll really miss her. And wow, the one thing done to actually make this personal, and it's not done by Scorpion, but again by his damn girlfriend. <clears throat> one message for another. <laughs> Frosty. Frosty! Again? So he just gets immediate revenge, making this all feel very hollow. What is that? All that remains of Perone. Cold, isn't it? Sub-Zero killed her, along with two of my best ninjas. What? What is this? Scorpion goes and tells on Sub-Zero to the Lin Kuei? I think we're seriously missing the scene where Scorpion got neutered. Yeah! Oh! Unicality! Yeah! So Sub-Zero finally actually makes it personal between him and Scorpion, and the first thing Scorpion does is go, I'm telling! Blood feud? Bad conquest, bad. This is just wienerish to the max and makes no sense for him to do whatsoever. Show him who has the power. So 
of Zero. It's Grandmaster Charles of the Lin Kuei. We're just sort of kind of worried you've gone rogue. If you could just not do that, we'd be really happy. Oh, of course I'm joking. It's just a pager. Yeah, tattoo pagers. It truly is the future. Or the past, as it actually is supposed to be. Is that monster my son? Your son was good. Riveting speech there, Kung Lao. This could have actually been a pretty powerful scene where his father learns there's still good in his son who was stolen from him, but it's all very ho-hum in the end. Just like with his daughter's death. And speaking of empty things, Lin Kuei threatened to kill Sub-Zero for siding with his family and Kung Lao over them. <sighs> These are the people that trained Sub-Zero, right? Shouldn't they think, hmm, if I challenge the man who can freeze blast me, maybe he'll freeze blast me. Must I kill again? Bibality. Your hatred for each other. It's destroying my plan. My stupid, stupid plan! You're making me think I shouldn't just pair up random people who might not like each other! This fight is mine. And what happens after? We'll return, as before. We'll go back to the Lin Kuei. No, they're dead to me. You can stay here, fight for something that matters. For Earthrealm? For your world. Now, of course, this is Conquest, so Sub-Zero won't join, but think about it if he did. This could have been an awesome addition to the cast and their team. Having Sub-Zero be a regular from this point on might have also increased some interest in the show. We are too different, Kung Lao. Both raised from childhood for one thing. To fight. I was raised to kill. I will still give this scene some props though, as I think it's the strongest part of the story, again making me think this would have been a good character to keep around. But instead, he gives Kung Lao the cold shoulder! Or the Sub-Zero neck pinch, apparently, and then locks the dynamic dummies in the weapons room. So again, we get a pretty nice fight between the two with some pretty cool spots. Until... You're finished. Wait, being knocked into a shed didn't kill him? Get out of here! Finish him. Bibality. Wow, I don't know what those two expected. Go get Sub-Zero! Okay! Oh shit, it's Sub-Zero! Run! Scorpion! I don't know why I'm yelling at you just standing there! I guess I sense the teleport coming! I wish he'd stayed. Are you all three friends? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. And do you trust each other? Yes. Yeah. In the Lin Kuei, friendship is forbidden. Oh yeah, the guy who's left the Lin Kuei because he didn't agree with their ideals, I'm sure would stick to their ideals. Good point, Raiden. Don't be fooled by a flicker of emotion. He's a cold-eyed killer. Yeah, with all that caring about his family, what a cold-eyed killer! And don't forget how he killed all of you before the scorpion fight! Oh, right, he actually just tried to keep all of you out of the fight. Just like a cold-eyed killer would. Must I kill again? He's a cold-eyed killer. Stop looking for ways to get out of having to kill again, you cold-eyed killer! This is Raiden's dumbest episode to this point. He jumped from being the god of useless right to the god of hypocrisy. You have a headache. A grandmaster of the Lin Kuei is dead. But I guess his spare robe isn't, so we can all count ourselves lucky. The murderer is Sub-Zero. One of you will kill him. Smoke. <laughs> Shut up! 
<laughs> Shut up, Smoke. Well, I hope you all enjoyed the first and last appearance of Smoke in the series. Yay! Woo! That's right, more ending twists with no payoff, a conquest staple. But this is unfortunately also the last episode for both Sub-Zero and Scorpion. While we did get some decent fights between the two, their backstories with each other were weak and could have used some actual time for development, but instead it was just a sloppy connection to get these two into a fight. Sub-Zero came off almost looking too strong in this episode, as multiple times people tell Kung Lao he could just kill him in an instant. Which kind of makes our Mortal Kombat champion look pretty weak. Still, their scene together was pretty good, and the show really could have used the shakeup of having Sub-Zero around. And while I'm not a big fan of the Scorpion used to be Takeda backstory, if you have it, you should use it. So they should have kind of pushed on that issue, especially where they brought it up in this episode, and maybe Takeda's personality started to show up in Scorpion. This could have pushed him more towards the neutral standpoint, making him a sometimes ally of Kung Lao. Lao and friends. This also could have created an interesting dynamic if Sub-Zero had stuck around. Scorpion unfortunately just looked really weak here, not only again being bitched around by Shao Kahn, but his girlfriend as well. Also, Khan just shouldn't have been involved with this plot at all, as it just made him look like an idiot for coming up with such an asinine plan. Oh! Next time on Conquest, it's the start of their greatest arc. AKA their only one, pretty much. The Bee Women. <laughs> Which, by the way, Vorpax was one of the whole time. Give my love to the zeros.